Hey fellow mobs, Moby here. Welcome back to Armored Legends. In this series, we interview some of the greatest players in the world and have them share their strategy, build, and tech. Navi is largely an unknown player due to time constraints preventing her from entering tournaments regularly, but when she does show up, she's able to throw down with some of the best. I actually started playing Armored Core just with Armored Core 6. It was my very first experience with the franchise. I originally knew from software, from their work with Dark Souls, Elden Ring, Bloodborne, and it all went downhill from there. I actually was gifted Armored Core 6 because I kept seeing like, people talking about being filtered by the helicopter, and I wanted to know what was up. <laughs> And my friend was like, all right, let's see, let's, let's see how well you do. And I went in, happy to say, I only got to kill twice before I figured out what was going on. So originally, my in my introduction to like competitive scenes stuff I got was through Striker. And then I saw the announcement for the tournament and I was like, hey, you know, that sounds pretty cool. And it could be fun to try to do something competitive with this. I really enjoy Final Fantasy. Even like my, my little Discord icon as it's walking is a Final Fantasy sprite. I've heard the term Crab Knight get thrown around after that match between me and Risa. Apparently it's like a mix of C Knight's build and my own like aggressive spin on it. I like the Crab Knight style because it allows me to not only aggress but to fall back when I need to. If I'm losing the Stagger War, then I can thrust with NGI either upwards or Assault Boost away to gain some distance. I can use Viral Lights to keep myself hovering and just out of reach of uh, bunny hoppers and things like that. I can stay a good distance away to strike with my hammer. The build allows for a keep away style. The shield allows me to stay in my enemy's face as well as assault boosting towards them with the reduced impact that that provides. For a while, I ran Brizzle boosters, but after the nerf, I switched over to NGI because of the, the extra boost and thrust. It allows me to keep aggressing even in AB. I started running Viral legs as well. I kind of like my chonky boys, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, running a very lightweight AC, I feel like if I make one mistake, I'm dead. But running a heavier, higher AP, more defenses, more aptitude stability, I can kind of stay in my opponent's face and keep aggressing against their, like, counter their aggression. I chose my shield because it allows me to not only tank, meta choices like double zenny but even like the like tanks in the current meta as well there's a very popular setup going around with the double hand missiles and two back lasers with the lcbs and the shield allows me to stay in their face and hammer between lcb hits by shielding them great shoulder weapon that would be my javelin beta depending on the distance you are from the target it changes the target has to dodge for it a direct hit will make the javelin beta explode early and deal instant impact i like that not only does it allow me to like keep up aggression but it also allows me to punish approaching aces another ranged option on my right hand, I have the four cell missile that I can just keep up the pressure on my opponents with. And because I use the Javelin Beta and the hand missiles, I run the P10 SLT. That is the SCS with the shortest missile lock on. It helps to just keep that bullet hell going while I stay in the opponent's face and uh, pelt with them with hammers. Basho arms I utilize to get more uh, damage and stagger out of my hammer hits. Good hit with hammer on staggered target will generally do about 2,400 something damage. And on lightweights, it completely shreds them. This buildup is actually very strong against BVO setups because I can just stay hovered slightly off the ground, keep at a distance to keep my stagger down with my shield, while also pressuring them with hammer in between the Ento reloads. For my head choice, I do Viral because I enjoy the defensive stability as well as the AP that it provides. The VE40A has really good generator output, which helps me keep my EN up and keep aggressive. Since I don't really go to the skybox of this build too often, I can kind of just hover above the ground on my hover, keep my shield up, hammer away, and whenever I need to get EN. I just drop to the ground real quick and get it back very quickly. I use Santai. I like the EN capacity of Santai. I don't really like the recharge time of Coral. Being able to use Santai allows me to keep up with quick boost dodge as well, which lets me fight other missile fighters and as well as those tanks that use missiles to force you into CQC. I utilize pulse armor. If in case I fail a stagger war, it lets me get a little bit of breathing room, either force the opponent to retreat out of my hammer range and I can chase them with missiles, or if my opponent tries to push, and then run out of EN, I can pop Pulse Armor and then just hammer spam in their face. For my shield part, I use the VP61PS for its really good deploy heat buildup. You can spam it multiple times without much punishment, and the initial guard impact is very nice. 0.6 second duration helps against Severman shots. You can do it very easily whenever someone's approaching and they raise up their weapon. And the cooling being max allows me to quickly put it away in between bursts and keep it active for every single onslaught an opponent has to give me for high burst damage. 
for the Crab Knight, when players aggress towards you and burn all of their EN load, I like to pop Pulse Armor, and then that allows me to just hammer in their face before they can fly away. And by the time they get their EN back, I can uh, pe pepper them with either the Javelin Beta or the Hand Missiles. I also like throwing out kicks in close range, counter kicking aggressive opponents that are self boosting towards you, or doing a kick into a hammer hit. Kick and hammer is a true combo. Like, even if an AC tries to self boost away from you, their quick boost isn't going to come out fast enough in order to escape the first hit of the hammer. And if you're close enough to a stagger, that guarantees a second hit as well. Playing hammer and bipedal is kind of suffering though, because you don't have any movement with it. With Tetrapod, even in the rep matchup versus me and Risa, there were several moments where I should not have been able to confirm a second hammer hit, but I was able to because of movement on Tetrapod. Also, the NGI booster allows me to like quickly approach with the hammer because of its large thrust. I can easily get in hits from like 200 meters or so. The shield allows me to really feather consistent damage coming out as well, like Biento shots or even uh, Gatlings, Shadway, that kind of thing, by repeatedly bursting my shield during its initial guard duration. At round start, I tend to use AP kicks to reach a higher advantage point, which allows me to counterplay against any AP aggression by forcing them to climb to reach me, but it also allows me to go to starting position to go like rat mode if I really want to. You'll notice that I tend to pop over cover, in between cover, try to use the best I can to either block incoming nebula shots, bazookas, LCBs, that kind of thing. I've seen enough Lammer Knights on lock station to know where I built my build struggles. I can only try to assault boost at 500 meters so often uh, while they stay in the air forever before I'm like, all right, maybe I should switch off hammer. Maybe I just need some different missiles. But when I finally get that like tank matchup or the BVO matchup, or the double Zimmy matchup, I'm like, finally, especially when they run LCBs. And this is why I run shield as well. I like to call them tank kites. Tanks completely loaded up on missiles and a nebula. And I can negate the nebula with a impact guard while also keeping up aggression to self boost and kicks to prevent the take from getting away from me. And I can throw out hammer hits in between nebula shots in order to keep up stagger. Visual inspiration by AC was the one of the 12 deities from Final Fantasy XIV, that being the titular deity Lim Lion. She is the navigator of the seas and patron deity of the city of Limso Lamensa. She is a sea goddess with tridents and two dragons with red and blue coloring, which I represented with the back pieces on my AC. next time on Armored Legends. This player made their debut in the recent Rubicon Rumble, bringing Water Strider in to top 8.